Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaris, and welcome to the Battle for Wesnoth. The Battle for Wesnoth is a free-to-play open-source game originally released in June of 2003, and is actively maintained and updated by a passionate group of developers basically for free. There is no concept of microtransactions in, in this game. There's nothing you can purchase in the game itself. As I said, it's open source. Um, and this game is a hex-based, turn-based um, strategy game. It's a very, very cool game. It's set in a fantasy world similar to Warhammer or Lord of the Rings. And I'm very excited to show you guys it. Um, now that I have more free time due to the whole COVID-19 situation, I've decided that I want to start making at least a few videos again. And I wanted to start by showing you guys some games that are close to my heart. This game, I uh, first heard of it about six or seven years ago, and I've played it on or off since then. Or on and off since then, rather. So what I wanted to do was hop into a, a rookie-level campaign um, to show you guys uh, what the game kind of looks like, how it plays. Um, now, as I said, this game is free to play. You can either download it uh, free from their website, or you can also get it on Steam for also free. Um, so if you guys are interested in trying it out, maybe playing with me, because I'd be happy to play with you guys if you guys want to play with me um, at some point, then uh, please just let me know in the comments below and let me know how you guys like the game. Uh, it's definitely not a game that's very widely known. Um, a lot of people don't know of it, so hopefully I'm introducing some of you guys to a new interesting game that you might enjoy playing. Um, the game has a lot of different features. You have the huge campaign list. These are all campaigns um, made by the developers, but they also have an extensive add-on system, so people can make their own campaigns, their own scenarios, their own units, their own you know sounds, music, voices, everything. It's crazy. Um, I've made my own a uh, few scenarios, and I've also made uh, where I've started a campaign in the past that I haven't worked on in a while. Um, but yeah, you've also got a multiplayer system, which is how we would play if you guys wanted to play. Well, let me hop into an Orcish Incursion and give you guys kind of a good breakdown of the game. We're going to go on normal mode, and we're going to start off with an introduction to this campaign. So the campaigns are all from different points in time during Wesnoth's history. This campaign in particular is from uh, a very early point in the history as the orcs are actually landing on the great continent which you saw on the map on the title screen. So let's start off with the cutscene. The arrival of humans and orcs caused turmoil among the nations of the great continent. Elves, previously in uneasy balance with dwarves and others, had for centuries fought nothing more than an occasional skirmish. They were to find themselves facing conflicts of a long forgotten intensity. Their first encounter with the newcomers went less well than either side might have wished. But humans, though crude and brash, at least had in them a creative spark which elves could recognize as akin to their own nature. Orcs seemed completely alien. For some years after Haldric's people landed, orcs remained scarce more than a rumor to trouble the great fastnesses of the elves. That remained so until the day that an elvish noble of ancient line, Erlornas by name, faced an enemy unlike any he had ever met before. The orcs were first sighted from the north marches of the great forest of Wesmere. As you can see, we have our campaign map, and this shows us where we are, and now we're actually going to be getting into the game. So, we have Lorm L uh, Lomarfell, our elvish rider here. My lord, a party of aliens has made camp to the north and lays waste to the forest. Our scouts believe it's a band of orcs. Orcs, it seems unlikely. The human king, Haldric, crushed them when they landed on these shores, and since then they've been no more than a bogey mothers used to scare the children. So it seemed, my lord, yet there is a band of them in the north, cutting down healthy trees by the dozen and making great fires from the wood. They trample the greensward into mud and do not even bury their foul dung. I believe I can smell the stench even here. So the grim tales of them prove true. They must not be allowed to continue. We must banish this blight from our forests. I shall marshal the wardens and drive them off. And the council needs to hear of this. Take the message and return with reinforcements, for there might be more of them. Yes, my lord. And here we go into a scenario, the first scenario of this campaign. So, Wesnoth is conducted in basically a number of scenarios. Campaigns are made up of multiple scenarios, but of course multiplayer battles and things generally are only one scenario. 
In each scenario, you will typically start off with a lord, signified by the golden crown to the top left of the unit. Um, lords are extremely, extremely important. They are what allow you to recruit units. So as I said in the title screen, this is a hex-based game. You have a map made up of hexes. Each hex has different terrain on it. We have villages, we have forests, we have mountains, hills, um, we have castles, and we have a keep, which is what my lord is standing on. We have flat ground. We have the orcs over here also on technically castle squares, although they're of a different uh, texture. But yeah, so this is the map. Um, some very important things let's first go over. So your lord, as I said, is very important. He is what allows you to recruit units. If I right click on a adjacent castle square to a keep, like first your lord has to be on a keep. And when he's on a keep, he can recruit units in adjacent castle squares. As you can see, I have four units available to recruit. Each unit uh, will cost upkeep according to its level. Most of the units I can recruit are level one, and they cost one upkeep. Each upkeep is just a gold per turn. If a unit's level two, it'll cost two gold per turn, etc. Villages each support one unit and also give you a number of gold per turn. So if I have one unit and one captured village, the village will just support that unit for no cost. But if I have two units, then the goal, then it'll support one unit, and then that extra unit's upkeep will be taken into account, and it'll be accounted for here in upkeep. And then I have my net income, which is basically a function of your upkeep, but also because I have basically no units except for my lord, it's just based on the number of villages I have in any map-specific settings. Um, okay, so I have my lord. As I said, you can recruit units. Now, the way units work... Is there's two types of attacks. There's a melee attack and a ranged attack. Um, ranged attacks do not fire from multiple hexes away. It actually just determines whether or not the enemy can counterattack. So here, I have a melee attack and a ranged attack for this Elvish Archer. If I attack someone with a ranged attack, and they do not also have a ranged attack, they cannot counterattack. But if I attack them with a melee attack, and they have a melee attack, they can counterattack. Same with ranged. So if I attack someone who only has a ranged attack with a melee attack, then they can't counterattack because they don't have a melee attack. So that's how that works. So see the breakdown here, five times two. This means five damage, two strikes. For the bow, five damage, four strikes. Now this is where the terrain comes um, into importance as you don't always just get five damage, four strikes with that. It will depend on what terrain the enemy is standing on and the properties of your attack. So if we look at my lord here, our Lornas, he has two attacks, 8-4 sword, melee, 7-3 fairy fire, ranged arcane, and magical. Now magical we'll talk about in a second, but let's look at his unit description. This will give us a breakdown of his resistances, um, but most importantly is terrain modifiers. So as you can see, there's a list of all the terrains in the game and then the defense that this unit has on those terrains. So in Forest, for example, he is 70% defense. Your defense gives you your dodge chance. So I have, if someone attacks me, it's to dodge that one strike. If he attacks me twice, I have a 70% chance to dodge the first and a 70% chance to dodge the second. So as you can see, terrain is extremely important. Also, I have movement costs here. Um, which gives me my cost of movement over each various terrain. You can see your unit's movement points on the side here. You can also see their health and XP. I have six movement points and since forests and flat ground cost one for this unit. I can basically move six six um, six inches in all, or uh, not six inches, but six tiles in all directions. Okay. The other important things to note is time of day. Some units uh, have lawful, neutral, or chaotic status, or liminal, um, and these this means they get certain attack uh, bonuses or attack debuffs depending on the time of day. Now, elves are neutral, so they don't gain any attack bonuses and also don't uh, lose any attack depending on the time of day. They're always just flat damage. Um, but Orcs, for example, are strong at night. They're chaotic, so they get attack boosts at night and do not, um, they get attack boosts at night, um, but they lose damage during the daytime. So as I said, units have health and XP. Their XP basically will tell you um, when they can level up. So if I get 120 XP, 
then this unit will level up into an Elvish High Lord, which is which it just says is unknown, which we will find out once we actually level him up, if we do level him up. So let's start recruiting. Now, orcs, uh, we're probably going to want a healthy mix of elvish fighters and elvish archers. You can see at the top here some important information. I have my turn number. I need to complete this scenario in 24 turns. Then I have gold. Gold, of course, is extremely important. I was talking about gold generation and upkeep earlier. Um, I have the number of villages that I own out of the number of villages in the map, the number of units I have, my upkeep information, and my net income. And this is very, very important. So I have three villages. You can see that I still have five income. This is because this unit is being supported by a village. Your lord does not need to be supported. He doesn't cost anything. Um, I think I'm going to recruit a second fighter. And then maybe even a third fighter. We're going to get three fighters. Um, as you can see, my income is still five. Now, if I recruit a fourth unit, then I have an elvish archer. Now my income is four because these three, um, three villages have already supported three units. So I'm going to recruit an Elvish Archer, I think I'm going to recruit a second Elvish Archer, and I'm going to recruit an Elvish Shaman. Okay, so now I can go ahead and end my turn, and we're going to let the Orcs do their thing. So they've recruited three Wolf Riders and a few Archers. Look at them, big, slow, clumsy, and hardly a bow in hand. Keep to the trees, use your arrows, and the day will be ours. Sorry, not Archers, Grunts. All right, so now we can left click on our units to select them, and then we can see the unit's range, what he, how, uh, how far he can move, and we can move them. So the first thing we're gonna probably want to do is um, get some more villages. So I'm gonna move my archers up. I think we're gonna get a fighter out here ready to take a village, this fighter ready to take that village. Move the other fighter up, we'll move our shaman. Now, we still have 61 gold. We're going to get some more uh, income soon, and let's see, so yeah, three wolf riders, two grunts, and an archer. So I think we're probably going to want another archer at least, and maybe another shaman. And then we'll go with one scout, who can kind of ride the outsides, maybe pick off any stragglers. Um, so anyone who gets too isolated, and we'll end our turn. So you can see now the enemy is moving out of their keep and they are capturing some villages. Wolf Rider is a bit of an interesting unit. Um, pretty low defense, almost everywhere. 50% is about as high as it gets. I believe they might have 60% on mountains and castles. Yeah, other than that, it's 50 or lower. They do not do not have a ranged attack. Now, right now, it's daytime. Daytime is very important for me because it means the, as you can see here on the right side, orcs are chaotic, minus 25% damage during the day. Now, here, it's afternoon. Wesnoth is run in six turn cycles, generally. You have two turns of day, you have dusk, you have two turns of night, and you have dawn. So it's afternoon, which means this turn, it's day, but then next turn, it's going to be dusk. So the question is, do I want to just attack them right now? I think the answer is yes. They're, they didn't actually recruit that many units, so I'm going to have a pretty good advantage here. So let's get my archer out. Let's get my shaman out, and we're going to get a scout, I think, just to capture a village here. Um, yes, I think that's what we're going to go with. So now I can start moving in for the attack. So to gain XP, XP is an extremely important thing. I talked about leveling up. Each unit takes a certain amount of XP to level. So whenever a unit just fights, they get XP depending on the level of the unit they are fighting, whether they attacked or whether they're defending. Level 1s, if I go and fight this level 1, like this Wolf Rider, as you can see on the side, level 1. If I go and fight him, then I will gain um, 1 XP. If I kill a level 1, you get 8 XP times the level of the unit. So if I kill a level 1, I get 8 XP. If I, get, if I uh, kill a level 2, I get 16 XP, level 3, 24, etc. Um... However, something important to note is the fighting bonus does not stack with the killing bonus, so I don't get 1 XP and then 8 XP, I just get 1 XP, or I get 1 XP for fighting, or 8 XP for killing this guy. So, uh, let's see what we want to do. We probably want to pour in some arrows. Now, I want to be careful. I don't necessarily want to put an archer here, because that means that when if this guy comes to attack me, my archer is pretty vulnerable, as you can see. My archer has 70% chance to dodge in forest, but only 40% on flat ground. 
So, what we might want to do is potentially slow this guy. I think what we're going to do is we're going to form a line here and let the orcs crash into me. So I don't know if we're going to go for any killing blows here. We're going to put this pull of this guy up here. I think we're going to get our shaman out and slow. Now this special attack can slow, which halves the amount of spaces he can move and also halves his damage for his next turn. We're going to move another warrior up here. We'll get our archer here and we'll get another archer in here. So let's go in with a 5-4 melee attack. We have a hit, a miss, a hit, and a miss. So basically exactly 50%. Um, of course it doesn't always work out like that. We're going to go in with our bow now. One hit, two hit, three hit, four hit. So that was very, very lucky. Um, that will normally not happen. So let's see. I think we're just going to hold the position even though he is close to death. And I think we'll pull our lord up just in case we can get him some kills. You are generally going to want to level your lord up in campaigns, um, as having them low level means they can be rather susceptible to being killed by a high level unit quickly, which you will see in later scenarios. You can see the wolf rider went in for my archer, did not turn out very well because she has very high defense. And now they're doing just as I hoped. They are crashing in on the low defense terrain. The orcs are looking to get a surround off, but now it's dusk, which means these guys are going to take... Um, now that it's dusk, these guys are not going to deal less damage than normal. They're going to deal exactly uh, the amount they normally do. So my thinking here is I'd like to level both a shaman or a ranger. Um, a, a shaman or an archer, rather. So I think shaman, we're going to go for the slow. If we kill, we kill. If we don't, we finish with the ranger. We got the slow, we didn't kill, so let's finish with the ranger, hopefully. Yes, we do. Okay, so you can see my ranger gained, or Cody here, gained 8 XP. So now, we want someone on this village. Because villages, not only do they give you money, but they also heal your units 8 health per turn that they're standing on it, which is very, very important. He did not recruit any new units, so we just got these guys, so let's go in for that. He is unfortunately going to miss two strikes, but he hit the last two, which is fine. And let's see, what else are we going to do here? So I'm a little wary of fighting this guy just because flat ground. Um, I don't necessarily want to get my elves on flat ground. This guy, wow, hit four strikes in a row on 40%. Even though he was only on 40% defense, that's four 60% chance to hit strikes in a row, which is, you know, it's not that likely. I think we're going to come up here and pour some arrows into this um, Wolf Rider. One, two, three, four. Okay, so only hit one. Not the end of the world. We'll pour in another unit here. As you can see, um, RNG is a big factor in this game, and it's less of how do you avoid the RNG and more how do you deal with the RNG? How do you mitigate its effects? Like, generally speaking, you do not want to just say, oh, okay, I'm just going to Hail Mary this play and hope that it works out. Um, a lot of the time you want to make sure that if you're going in for a kill and putting a unit in a vulnerable spot, it's almost a guaranteed chance to kill. So I think one thing I want to do here, Grunts tend to have a really strong melee attack, so I'm going to try and come out and slow him. Now, unfortunately, I did not slow him. That's a bit of a problem. But now, units who are level 1 and up have a zone of control around them. See, this grunt here cannot actually move very far. Um, he can't. He normally has five movement points, as you can see here, but if I hover over him, he can't move five in this direction. This is because the units that are level one and up have a zone of control, which means as soon as you move next to them, they can no longer move any farther. Level zero units do not have a zone of control. So now what I want to kind of do is protect this shaman. I don't want her to die. So I'm going to try and block off the orcs so that they can't get many units into attacker. Right now, they could get two. They could move him to here. He can move one space before he stopped due to zone of control. And then this unit could come in and also hit her. So there's a possibility she dies. She cannot be killed by the uh, wolf rider. Um, I'm going to put my leader here. Maybe... Yeah, no. Maybe if I move here, then I could bait this guy into attacking him. And this guy, although I don't know if I really want to take that much damage with my leader. So I think we'll just keep it there, and we'll see what happens. The Wolf Rider is going in, gets two shots, pretty lucky against that. Looks like they're going to focus on the Elvish Fighter for now. He actually takes almost three hits, and he takes another hit. Will he live? That is the question. 
he will not. So now they got onto the forest here, not good, but my Elvish Shaman survived two hits. Okay, so now it's nighttime. Nighttime, not very good for me. I did forget about this guy that I should have moved up earlier. Um, so now the question is, what do I do? I think we may be looking to pull back to this position here so that we force them to be an open ground because they have gotten onto my village and I will take a heavy amount of damage. My guys are pretty out in the open. Um, I think here we are also going to pull back these guys too, get them into a better defensive position. Um, so let's see, so we can get uh, our Lornas. He may be able to get the kill here. I don't necessarily want him to get the kill, but we'll see if he does, he does. Okay, he does get the kill. Nice, okay. Get him a little bit of XP. And now let's start moving these units out. We're going to put our fighter here. We're going to put one shaman here. We're going to put... Uh, see, anyone I put here is very vulnerable. But uh, I don't necessarily need both shamans. So we'll put her there. She might get surrounded and really beat on. They can't get to these two archers. But we have a strong defensive position. Next turn will be the second watch of night. It looks like they're just going to go in for the archer. Or the, uh, the fighter. He takes one hit apiece from each of them, and he may end up dying here. He fortunately got a little bit unlucky there with his dodges, because he, he was on 60% defense. The wolf rider is now coming in, but now the wolf is on bad defense, and my archers here are on good defense, 60 and 70, and the wolf had, I think, 50 before. Alright, so now the question is, how do we work this? So these elvish, these orcish grunts are the biggest problem. We want to slow them, so that they do half the damage on their next turn. We got the slow here. Now I'd like to get another kill for my Elvish Archer here. Um, so I have two archers. These guys can't really come in. Maybe they'll just deal with him. So we'll see if this guy gets the kill. He gets the kill. Wow, okay, four shots. That was big. We'll bring this archer in on here. Even though this, this uh, Orcish Archer does a decent amount of damage, um, my archer has higher, way higher defense. You can see he only has a 30% chance to hit, and mine has 60 now another interesting thing you can do is the damage calculation uh, tool, it basically breaks down all the probabilities, um, but I feel pretty confident in this, so we're going to go in for the attack, we get one hit, a dodge, two hits, three hits, very very good. Now I would like to get my shaman a kill here if possible, because shamans are very very useful to level up as they can turn into full blown healers. You can see on the right here they heal plus four, but they can't cure poison, and a plus four heal isn't incredibly strong. So what we're going to do is, I think we're going to go in with the staff here, and we do get the kill. Nice. Okay, so now we want to eliminate some other orcs here. So he has 21 health. Let's see if Kalens, not Kalens, or Lornas, if he hits all three. He may, he may not. He does not. That's good for me, because that means I can probably get her the kill. Two hits. Nice. Okay, we do get her the kill. So now, this guy's slowed, so I'm not too worried about his damage. This guy, on the other hand, is not slowed, and he's going to do a decent amount of damage. So we're going to move to the village, and then we're going to also come in with our Elvish uh, Scout. Do a little bit of damage. Okay, so not a bad turn overall. If he targets the Shaman, if uh, and the Shaman gets a slow, we'll be fine. If the Shaman does not get a slow, she may be in trouble, as even the slowed Grunt might, may do a lot of damage. Looks like he's actually going for the Elvish Scout, and he may, wow, straight up die. That's uh, that's pretty insane. Some bad luck for him, but of course, just a scout, not the end of the world. Let's see what we're going to do here. So we pour some arrows, very unlikely to kill, but likely to do a decent amount of damage. Yes, exactly what we wanted, and we can come in here. Uh, not quite the finish, actually. So 60% chance, odds are... That he's gonna, she's only gonna hit once. But there's a decent chance that she'll kill. So let's see. I only want her to hit once. She does hit twice. Unfortunate. But now I have two shamans with some XP. Not the end of the world. Let's get the fighter. Do some damage to this guy. Odds are he will not be killing. Yeah, as you can see, missed twice. Uh, let's see if we can get a slow, actually. We did get a slow. That's good. Now, I would like to get her the kill now. So... What kind of damage we got here? Odds are we'll only hit once. Let's try that. We did only hit once, and now we can go in for almost a guaranteed kill. Almost a guarantee, and there we go. Kill secured. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape. We can start moving some units up. 
I do have a decent amount of gold, but clearly I do not need to recruit any more. So I am just going to save that gold for the next scenario. And now it's daytime, the orcs don't really have a good chance at stopping us. Now, this guy, their lord may come out of the keep. If I put someone vulnerable, vulnerable here, it's likely their lord will come out. But I would actually like that to happen. As if he comes out, it's unlikely he scores any kills. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some vulnerable archers here, or fake vulnerable archers here. I'm going to put some shamans in the back. The shamans, of course, heal plus four, so we're okay there. Going to get an archer up here. We're going to get a fighter over here, and we're going to get our Lornas to capture this village here, where the archer cannot reach him. So let's see what they do. If they come out with the lord, they do not come out with the lord. That's a bit unfortunate. But it wouldn't have been very wise for him to come out with the lord anyways. So we're going to go in, get some melee attacks. Okay, we're also going to go for some ranged attacks. Cannot even kill with these. Ideally, we do as much damage as possible. And now, so I either want to kill or get two hits so that my Elvis Shaman can get the kill. So let's see what happens. Two hits, looking good. Okay, three hits. So my Elvis Shaman is not going to get a kill, but my Elvish Archer, who is now kind of close, Cody here, um, is getting close to leveling. So I'm going to capture some more villages, get some more uh, gold on the board. As you can see, we're up to plus 12 income per turn. Now, the Orcish Warrior has uh, recruited another unit. And ideally, I want to end this soon. However, it is nighttime. So that's a little bad news for me. What I think we might do is it was 40%... Go to scenario objectives, 40% of gold carried over to the next scenario. We do have an early finish bonus, but we don't know how many, how big that bonus is. So I think what we might do, because I'm a little worried of losing a valuable unit if I just attack him in his keep at nighttime. So I think we're going to just establish a decent defensive line here. And ideally, now this archer who's close to leveling can only be hit by one unit. This guy can be hit by two, but he's... You know, he's pretty uh, pretty low, so I don't really care. She will probably live. Uh, and that's not a guarantee, though. So we're going to move her to there. He's actually just going to sit in the keep. Okay. I'm going to move my uh, lord down here. He's got 51 HP, not really in danger if this guy comes out. He's, he's actually just not going to move. Okay, so what this means is I'm going to move my forces up, get ready for the surround. Now, she is actually at risk. That's probably not a good idea. Uh, yeah. So we're going to put her there and put this guy here. Now, zone of control, they can't get to him. I can actually move him up further by one. And now he's going to come out. He sees the archer. But now it's morning. So this is when I can go in to strike. First, we're going to try and slow this guy if we can. We do not. He did have 60% defense, so it's not completely uh, out of the picture. We're going to try and go in for this guy. Bunch of hits. Let's see if we can't uh, weaken him. Nice. Okay. So either we get the kill with her, or we feed it to a Elvis Shaman. She does get the kill. Sick. Now, my lord, we have magical attack, so 70% chance to hit. Which is really good to do some damage to this guy. We're going to get our Shaman in. Hopefully get a slow. Yes, we do. That's really good. And now we're going to go in with the bow, as my sword only does one more damage, but he can't counterattack at all. Now, she is 2 XP away. Their lord is level 2, which means if my archer just, just attacks, doesn't even have to get the kill, she'll level up. Ideally, I would like to feed the kill to this shaman. So let's get the attack going, level her up. So we do have the level. So now, I we can either turn her into an elvish ranger or an elvish marksman. I, the elvish ranger... Is pretty cool. He, well, I guess she in this case, gets a better melee attack and a better ranged attack, and they also have this trait called Ambush, or an ability called Ambush, which means that they can hide in a forest and are essentially invisible until they move next to an enemy, or an enemy move that moves next to them. Also, you may have noticed these traits. Uh, traits, two traits are randomly generated for each unit you recruit from a pool. You can see Strong gives plus one damage um, to melee attacks and plus 1 HP, and Resilient gives plus 4 HP and plus 1 HP per level, so this ranger is pretty beefy. Um, Marksman has an important ability called Marksman, 
When used offensively, this attack always has at least a 60% chance to hit. This is very valuable. I think I'm going to go for this. And now let's see what we can't do about this guy. We want to put some XP around. Odds are this guy will not kill him. Hopefully just get him low. He did. Okay, he did one hit. Now, odds are this will also not kill. Ideally, we want just two hits. Okay, not two. So now, one hit does not kill. Now, we want the kill right here. And we did not get it. But he cannot really heal. At least he may heal 2, H two HP if he doesn't attack anyone. He will not. Okay. So now let's try and get the kill here again. Misses again. And what about her? She gets the kill. I've been bested, but the combat wasn't fair. A thousand curses on you, withered coward. May you suffer, and when my master Rualsha finds you, he may wipe your people. May he wipe your people from the face of this earth. So he dies, and he says, Rualsha, hmm, what if? Assemble a war party, we need to scout north. Now, she is almost leveled up. I believe she's one XP away, and we have finished the first scenario. So there we go. I'm going to call it here. My voice is getting pretty tired. It's already up to about a 30 minute video. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoy this. As uh, as I said, you can find it for free on Steam or on their download page. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys would like to see more of this, I know it's very different from a regular content. But as I said, I would like to show you guys um, uh, show you guys some games I've enjoyed playing. And if you guys are interested, I would be down to do some multiplayer at some point. So let me know in the comment section below. But for now, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys, for watching.